always Congo people cry day and night. They pretend to be happy is why we wear our clothes with different color. We still waiting for that color to be bright for our life. Conflict and colonialism have plagued the Democratic Republic of Congo since the arrival of King Leopold II in 1885. Through imperialism, colonialism and independence, the DRC has fought for the freedom of its people. Africa was not divided by Africans. All these borders were drawn by Europeans. As usual, issues in Africa, it's not just between Africans themselves. You've got people with significant interest. The DRC has some of the most mineral-rich land on the planet, making it a valuable location for the world's largest tech companies. We're talking about cobalt, we're talking about gold, any minerals that you can talk about to deal in the technology industry. So those companies, they go there to take those minerals because they just saw what is underneath. So they come with force. The force is why? Is guns. When they come with the guns, you don't have any option. They just uh, like destroy our community. They do things like animals, things, trapping women, killing children killing your husband in front of you. Again, all of these things is happening under the watch of the United Nations. The United Nations, in fact, has been in Congo for a very, very long time. After protesting the killings in her village, including of her husband, Lema had no choice but to leave behind two of her children and flee the DRC. So I just take with mine, my son, Pacifique, who was five years at that time. Lema and Pacifique spent a year in refugee camps in neighboring Uganda before fleeing and building shelter under a tree. I went there with all my belongings and I was a big mango tree. I started to live there under that mango. I spent there two years under the mango. Imagine I'm a woman, everything, no toilet, no nothing. If it's raining, I'm there. If it's, it's the sun, I'm there. In 2009, Lema was granted an interview to leave the country. The lady who was interviewing me from New Zealand, she said, Lema, you will be the first. I, I know you are so brave woman and you have passed through many things. And I did my interview was on Wednesday and on Friday I fly for New Zealand and I didn't where I'm going. Most uh, refugees, they don't take material things but they take on the skills that they have and the spirit. Like me, I didn't come with anything. I come with my hand and what I believe in my, my spirit and my skills and my culture as well. Lema brought many skills to her West Auckland community. One of them was the art of embroidery. I did embroidery for only for my house. And one day, I just think, oh, I need to tell my story. She was always crafting something. She was making bags, making earrings. And I asked Lema uh, if she would make something for an exhibition. As you see on this piece, this company, they give some party of people guns, and they they kill these people and displace them so they can be able to take all things they need. Here we have the world 
which is watching, but they never say anything about this mom and children and those people who are indigenous, who are crying always. The art that I'm most interested in is not made to be consumed easily or to sit as decoration in people's homes. It moves people, calls people to action. It um, burns in the back of your brain. So I can't blame somebody who doesn't know the story. You are responsible when you know the story now. And so everybody here, they are responsible to say something to change the Congolese life.